I need to thank to I need to thank Professor Christoph Marxis for his kindness in furnishing me in advance of publication with a copy of the World Register to Hall's Panarion. I must also thank Herr Friedrich Christian Kolatz, our sales editor Stephen Emel, and Ivo Romin and Ellen Grimsey of Bill for their understanding and support, and my daughter Marge for her important technical help. Introduction This translation of Book 1 of Epiphanius Panarion was originally published in 1987 and was reprinted with a few changes in 1997. Demand for it demand for it has been sufficient to warrant a second edition which is offered here. The opportunity has been taken to review and revise the translation edit and expand the notes and index and add indices and references together with in companion volume the panarion of Epiphanius of salamis book 2 and third the fide 1994 is the only current version in a modern language of the panarion in its entirety several works of significance have appeared since 1983, a line procures important Le Hersilogice Epiphany de Salamin 1988 carries further the study of the Panarion sources, which was begun in the 19th century by Richard Lipsius and also analyzes Epiphany's ways of dealing with his data. Procure test Lipsius' conclusions on 10 sects, seven of them for Book 1, in the course of her study, she translated extensively for the Panarion and from Epiphanius, predecessors Arrhenius and Pseudo Tertullian and his younger contemporary, Philaster of Prescia. Philip Amidon's The Panarion of, Epiph of St. Epiphanius of Salamis, selected passages 1990, 1990 could be termed a model epitome of the Panarion. It renders those passages with described sex, but omits a few news refutations. Amidon's rendition amounts in all to about two fifth to of, of the, the work. John Dico, doc, John Dico's dogma and mysticism in early Christianity, Epiphanius of Kipros, and legacy of origin appeared in the book. From, 19, from 1998, although it had previously been available on microfilm, the code translates excerpts for Epiphanius only incidentally but provides a penetrating study of his, of his life, the anti originist aspect of this thought, and, and the originist controversies of his last years. Finally, of the extreme of the extreme importance to, to students of FM News in 2008-06 publication of Horse World Register to the Panarion to the good officers of Friedrich Christian Kolatz, Christoph Marxis, and other scholars, awaited for nearly a century the invaluable tool. The invaluable tool also includes a grammatical and subject in the indices, and besides facilitating the study of Panarion should make practicable the revision of Hall's critical text. The present, the, the present work has been compared with all of this and is the indebted to them all. We render Karl Hall's critical text of the Panarion Book 1, the first 33 sects are from Hall's Anac Anacoratus Panarion Book 1, which was issued with Sakhaparat with Sakhaparat and textual notes in 1913. The rest of the rest are from Hall's second volume, republished in 1980 by Jürgen Dummer. The 1980 volume includes an appendix in which Dummer assembled suggestions 
which fair use scholars has estimated for the important halls of horse text. We translate this in the whole of our work, marking them with an asterisk and providing a short appendix which gives the Greek alternatives. The revision of horse text have often been mooted, but the lack of the word register has stood in its way. The enterprise ought now to be practicable. However, to revise this enormous text must be a long drawn out must be a long drawn out of requiring the cooperation of many scholars. Hall published the principles of his treatment of the Panarian text in nineteen ten in nineteen ten. He concludes that the eleven extant manuscripts, none of them complete, are descend from the single poorly copied archetype and that the text has been contaminated by artisizing scribes. In the previous to his 1913 edition, he complained that modern editors' dislike of Epiphanius had influenced their view of this text, that on the one, that on the one hand they had amended without reference to his distinctive style and vocabulary, but on the other, but on the other has a lot of absurdities to stand because if you find us but thought to be confused. In fact, within his parameters, Epiphanius is a particularly clear thinker. His quick has its peculiarities, but his but his sex forth of his aims and methods clearly at the outset carries them carries them too consistently, seldom disgraces dis, disgraces and return to his point when he does and provides the reader with every if he help he can. The difficulties of the text are the results either of scribal error or of Ifanius languages language. Hall is an a carefully edited is a is a carefully edited critical text. He sometimes amends but but more often restores a word of ways occasionally a longer unit. His restorations clear up many difficulties and usually appear to be the most logical choice. Now and then, the text gives a good sense without restoration and the panarion, partly written by mostly detected and what, under pressure of time, may not have been as smooth as Holmes surpassed. Nonetheless, there can be little doubt of that, little doubt that Hall has given us a fair approximation of what if fun use wrote. Epiphanius' Life and Writings Our chief sources of information about Epiphanius are his own works and correspondence, references in the writing of his friend Jerome in Palladio's Dialogue of the Life of John Chrysostom, and in Basil of Caesarea, Theophilus of Alexandria, and the Histories of Socrates and Sosomen. The short biographical notice prefaced ancient, ancient editions of Epiphanius and Coratus is, doubtful, is, is of doubtful value as is the legendary life ostensibly, ostensibly, ostensibly by the monks George and Polybius early in the 4th century CE, perhaps between 310 and 320, Epiphanius was born in Palestine in Bes at Besanduk, a village of the e in the inference of the city of Eleftheropolis near Gaza. It has been suggested that his parents were Jewish converts to Christianity. In favor of this are the facts that he was building more in Greek and Syria and knew a good deal about Jewish Christian sects and against it that his attitude toward Jews and was antagonistic and his knowledge of their customs major. major. That Epiphanius family sent him to Egypt in young man heart and young manhood suggests that they were well to do if his letter if his letter to Theodosius is authentic. They had brought him up in the faith of the father of Decaea. 
Zozomben says that he received his early education from monks, an important an important influence on, of, on him was his friend and mentor Hilarion, who is create, who is credited which brings with which with bring the monastic life to Palestine and who in his turn and had be had been taught by, by Antony of Egypt. Everyone use childhood everyone use childhood be gone. Help us understand him. Indoctrinated in childhood with Deacon Christianity, he was under monastic influence in his early years. His education, Christian and scriptural rather than classical, would have enforced his childhood training. The Homoousian version of Christianity was crucial to his identity from the first. It is no wonder that any river approach appeared to him as, as a treat, if Ivanius would have termed a poisonous snake to be repelled at, a, at all cost. Uh, if Ivanius' destination in Egypt would have been the school of rhetoric in the, Greek, in the Greek city of Alexandria. Here, he had a disturbing encounter with a sexual oriented group whom he identifies as Gnostics and describes in the Panarian Sex 2026. 20, Although we cannot know this, this episode, dangerous to his chastity and described by him, even years later, in an emotional letter, might have been a turning point, at the, le at the least it helps explain his distinction of anything Gnostic and his confession that all Gnostics were immortal. His literary, his literary style of lack of it, or lack of it, shows that he did not complete his rhetorical training. Instead, he joined a, he joined an Egyptian monastic community, where he remained for some years. Unfortunately, we do not know which one. Given his avid reading, given his avid reading, it must have emphasis knowledge as well as praxis. On the other hand, his viral, virulent anti-originism almost guarantees that it, it took the, uh, the, the anti-originist side of the controversy then raging among the monks of the Egypt. Returning to Palestine, probably nearer to the age of 30 than to the 20, the preface, of, to, the preface to the Ancoratus mentions Epiphanius founded his a monastery near Electro Electropolis and served it as its abode. His friendship with Hilarion, whose monastery was also near Gaza, continued. Jerome tells us Vita Hilarionis I that when Hilarion, when Hilarion died, Epiphanius circulated a short work in his place. On his years, as an abode, we know only his efforts to foster and defend when what he regarded as Christian orthodoxy. Panarion 41.6, his only personal reminiscence of his abbacy, shows his him shows him exposing and, banish, and banishing a gnostic a gnostic monk in 315 when in 300 315. 59. The Bishop of Eleftheropolis, Eftikus, signed the evasive creed of the Council of Celestia Panarion 2073-25, 1 until 26, 8, and attempted to enforce his homo, homo -sion in his diocese. Epiphanius was uncooperative. It was during this period that he visited the Homoousian bishop Eusebius of Versailles in exile at Tiberias, and there he met the converted Jew Josephus of Tiberias, who told him the colorful story he related at Panarion 30, for, for 1 until 12, 9. According to Jerome, Contra Ioannem 4, PL 23, 300, 
PL23 358D. Epiphanius was instrumental in persuading Eutychus to change his mind. It has been suggested, however, that it was the discomfort of the relations between Homotian, uh, a board and Homotian bishop, which prompted Epiphanius' move to Kipros, a move which led to his election to the See of Salamis in 30. 66. The clergy of Kipus restived under the Patriarchate of Antioch and inclined to look to Alexandria for guidance would have welcomed a homoousian of, of wide reputation, a friend of Athanasius and an ascetic. The Panarion shows so much interest in the monastic life that we must visualize Epiphan Epiphanius, once a bishop, as continuing his own austerity. He did not require an abstinence from meat and wine, however, and was suspicious of, leader, of leaders who enforced his requirement. Jerome's, Jerome's Vita Pauli tells us that he fostered the monastic movement and that his fame attracted novices from all over the world. He, al he allowed a degree of autonomy to the, to the other bishops of his far-flung prov province. Ancoratus 102-107 shows us that he was missionary-minded, eager to convince pagans of their error and brings them into the fault. And though, and though we have no information about his episcopal administration, the Panarion's clear organization and meticulous attention to details such as administrative capacity, it may have been a FIFA news who began the construction of the Greek Basilica, the ruins of which still stand near Famagusta. Epiphanius' prestige was great. Jerome refers to him up as Papa Epiphanius and others may have done, this, done the same. The abodes of Acacius and Paul, whose letters, whose letters he publishes at the beginning of the Panarion Rite, for not we alone, but all who hear of you confess that the Savior has, rap, uh, has, rap, has, re, has raised you up as a new herald a new John to proclaim what ought to be observed by those who resolve on this monastic cause. Letter of Acacius and Paul 1 6. At a time when the Arianizing Emperor Constantius, Constantius did not hesitate to exile an Athanasius, the Arian, the Arian Emperor Valens left Epiphanius in peace. Jerome Contraiwanem. To interfere with him would presumably have risked uh, an uproar. Epiphanius was respected not only for his pity and rectitude, but for his learning. Churches far from Kipus consult consulted him on doctrinal issues, then Coratus, of which we treat below. In his reply to inquiries from the, new, from the church at Cedra in Pamphylia, the letter to Abrabia concerning Mary's perpetual virginity, Panarion 2078, is another example of his responses to queries. At some time, he gathered a collection of extracts from Marxian's, from, from Marxian's canon, which could be used to, refu to refute Marxian's thesis. He published this together with his comments on them. In the long Panarion 42, even in extreme old age, Jerome tells us at the Viris Illustribus 114, Epiphanius continued to publish short works. His early self having databel work is a fragment of a letter to Eusebius, Marcellus, Bibianus, and Carpus, presented on page 218 and 219 of Codex Ambrosianus 515. This was 
written by written somewhere be, be between the year 367 and 373 it defends the Antiochian dating of Easter used by the church on Kipros on the Saturn on the Sunday of the Nisan 14 rather than on the Sunday after the spring equinox the Alessandrian observance it includes a kernel it includes an, a chronology of Christ last week on earth which resembles one found in the apostolic constant constitutions and to which there may be an allusion at Nakhamar's apocryphon of James. Aguably, the FIFA Aguably FIFA news best work in the Ancoratus written in 374. The back of the Church of Sedra says the introductory of correspondence cannot enter harbour because of contrary winds of wrong doctrine, particularly concerning the Holy Spirit, Epiphanius shows how a man can become uncaught. Letter of Palladius 1.3 and Coratus 119.16 Besides the Holy Spirit, the world discuss the, discusses the Trinity and Christ's incarnation and resurrection. Text the doctrine of origin and includes a poem against Greek religion at 12.7 until 13.8. We find the outline of what, what of what was to become the Panarion, showing that Epiphanius already had this work in mind. This was begun, in fact, in 3074 or 30. 3075 and can be considered a circle to, uh, to the Ancoratus. We discuss it below. During the same period, about 376, Epiphanius attempted to resolve a scandalous schism in the important church of Antioch. He tells the story of Panarion. The Christian, the Christian community there was divided into four factions, headed respectively by the Aaron Eusus and three representatives of Homoousian Christianity, Meletius, Vitalius, and Paulinus. Meletius had the allegiance of the majority, but in exile. Vitalius had been consecrated by Apollon Apollinarius of Lodicia as a respected bishop whose Christology was, however, suspect. The third, Paulinus, had the support of Damasus of Rome. He was a disciple of the former bishop of Antioch, Eustasius, staunch Homotian and participant in the Council of Decaea, who, however, had been exiled, exiled on the charge of Sabellianism. Unknown to Epiphanius, this unknown to Epiphanius, the stu situation was further complicated by Vitalis' teaching, learned by a blood from Apolli Apollinarius, that Christ's mind knows was not human but only divine. Epiphanius had already encountered distorted forms of this doctrine brought to Kipus about 370 by young disciples of Apolli Apollinarius. Panari Panarion describes some of their ideas and speaks of the calling of a sign to, con to condemn person of this kind. To condemn persons of this kind. On his visit to Antioch, Epiphanius discovered Vitalis' adherence to the same doctrine in a milder form, but one which, the, which he still found shocking. Thus, he could not enter into, the, into communion with Vitalius, nor, for reasons we do not know, did he consider communion with Miletius. On the strength of Paulinus, written confession of faith Epiphanius and the Cypriot and the Cypriot church with him recognized him as the lawful bishop of Antioch. This unfortunately left Paulinus and Vitalius congregations at odds with each other. Epiphanius attempted to gain support for Paulinus from the influential Basil of Caesarea, but to no avail, Apollinarius in the meantime rejected both Epiphanius and Paulinus and consecrated new bishops. The results of Epiphanius' visit 
Misus et Antiochso, the Ant Antiochso, both the extent of his influence and the limitation of it. On the one hand, no appear, no one appears to have resented his intervention in a sea not his own, but on the other, his word was though by no means always take, taken as law. Whether Epiphanes attended the first council of Constantinople in 3081 is very, is very doubtful. During the winter following, however, in 382, he traveled to Rome with Paulinus and Jerome to attend a synod called by Damasus to discuss the relations between the Western and Eastern churches. If Epiphanius hoped that Damasus would affirm his earlier support of Paulinus, he was appointed. Damasus was now suspected him of Sabellianism. During this time, however, Epiphanius boarded with the wealthy widow Paula and, is to, with, and was into, instrumental in persuading her in abandon to luxurious life a Roman a Roman aristocrat for the cloister. She joined it east with Jerome as her cha chaplain and founded a convent at Bethlehem. Jerome with a Pauli 20. A few, a few years later, a few years later, perhaps in 3085, we find Epiphanes visiting her on her sickbed and laboring unsuccessful un and success successfully to convince her that drinking wine will, when ill is proper. Jerome Vita Paule 20. Seven years later, in 3692, Epiphanius published his, he, de, he published his The Mensuris et Ponderibus, a manual of information for students of scripture. In, 39, in 1393, we find him on another visit to Palestine, traveling to battle to share, a, to share a service with the Bishop of Jerusalem, John. In a village church, he found a certain painted with the image of Christi, Christ of Saint, tore it down on at once, and advised the parishioners to use it as a burial sort for the poor. His letter to John, Epiphanius, Jerome Epistle 1551 relates this incident and in, includes Epiphanes' promise to replace the certain. It, allo, it also re, rather lamely explains Epiphanes' coordination to the priesthood of, of Jerome's brother Paulinians, Paul, of Jerome Paulinians and canonical ones, ones since, although it took place at Epiphanes Monastery near Eleftheropolis. Paulinian was to serve at Bethlehem in John the Diocese. Most importantly, however, this letter addressed to the convinced originis, originis John is an anti-originist tract and was circulated as such. Epiphanius work on originism, originism and originist dominated what we know of his last of his year, last years. This had nothing to do with Origen himself, who was long dead. Epiphanius admitted Origen's hexapla and appreciated some of his writings. CF Panarion for sixty-four point three point five and five five and three seven six but consider his doctrine gnostic and the source of Arianism. Important among his objections published as early as, early as the Ancoratus and repeated in the Panarion, where Origenes, where Origenes allegedly subordinates subordinationist view of the Trinity, his doctrine of the pre-existence, fall and restoration of all souls, including Christ and Satan's, and his denial of so Epiphanius saw it of the resurrection of the body. From 1393 until 1397, 
Epiphanius fought against Augustinism in Jerusalem and Palestine. His opponents, his opponents were John of Jerusalem and Rufinus, almoner to the abbess Melania on the Mount of Olives, and translators into Latin of Origen's Periachon. His chief, his chief ally was Jerome. Among them, Atarbius, it is thought at Epiphanius' instigation, made the rounds of Jerusalem's monastery, monasteries, demanding that monks who were suspected of offering Origen's Origen signed a formal denunciation of his teachings. Jerome signed. Rufinus predictably refused to see Atarbius. Either the festival of Encania or the Holy Week of 1397 saw an ugly incident at Jerusalem. Invited to a preach in the morning, Epiphanius delivered a denunciation of Origen, which was plainly aimed at John. John retorted in the afternoon with the same against anthropomorphism, a view which some monks certainly held and which and with, with origins often stigmatized the A few days later, a few day, a few days later, John published a confession of his, of faith. Epiphanius could find no fault with it, but Still unsatisfied, wrote in wrote in 1390s wrote his letter to John. This was secularized among the bishops and monks of Palestine, accompanied by another letter which asked them to break communion with John. Instead of replying, John instead of replying, John wrote an apologia to Theophilus, Athanius' successors. Athanasius successor as Patriarch of Alexandria. This, in turn, called for Jerome's contrayuanem, which, which stated his own version of the case against Origen. Jerome also wrote a contra Rufinum, although he and Rufinus made peace in 1397. Next, followed the crisis of the Origenist controversy in Egypt. Under heavy pressure from anti origenist monks, Theophilus abandoned his previous tolerance of Origenism, origenism and proceeded against, against the Origenist monks of Nitria, 40 miles from Alexandria. Early in 400, he, conferred, he confirmed a synod which condemned the reading of po the reading or possession of Origen's work. This was followed by a decree of exile for the Nitrian Origenis, accompanied by the by the wrecking of the cells and burning of the and burning their books. Theophilus wrote for support to the churches of Palestine and Cyprus, and in particular urged Epiphanius to convene a similar synod on, Kip on Cyprus. Then he did. This he did, and jubilantly announced the result in a letter to Jerome Epiphanius, Jerome Epistle 97, uh, 91. Meanwhile, the sires from Nitria has made their way has made their way to various Christian and monastic centers led by Isidore and distinguished, and distinguished tall brothers. Ammonius, Dioscorus, Eusebius, and Eftimius, about, the, about 80, came to Constantinople and appealed for help to the Patriarch John of Chrysostom. Whatever his own attitude toward origin, Chrysostom showed sympathy for the size and wrote to Theophilus and urging the instant instantment. Epiphanius was then moved to set out on what proved to be his last journey, a voyage to Constantinople for the defense of Christian orthodoxy and the unmasking of John's supposed originism. Arriving in the spring of 402 or 403, Epiphanius declined John Chrysostom's 
over of hospitality and communion. He, however, held his own service outside the city and uncanonically ordained a deacon, Socrates, and Sosomen give differing accounts of the subsequent events. According to later Sosa, according to the later Sosamen, Epiphanius had an encounter with Ammonius, which con which convinced him of his own injustice. Socrates, however, says that while on his way to a public appearance in the cathedral of Holy Apostle Epiphanius, was confronted by Chrysostom's act diacon Serapion who accused him of uncanonical behavior and warned him to the danger of a riot. Whatever the truth of the matter, Epiphanius left Constantinople without taking any public action. He died at sea on his way home to Kypros. His refusal to communicate with John was used as ammunition by John's opponents at the Synod of the Oak in 404. Nautin has written, Epiphanius, Epiphanius suffered harassment of anyone who appeared to approve of origin is indeed difficult to stomach. In his defense, it may be urged that he was Palestinian and had also lived for many years in Egypt. Was he not defending heart and in harm against what he saw as a dangerous virus? As to his support of the writer and sovereignty Theophilus, Rigi has, has reminded us, has reminded us of his reference for the Sea of Alexandria. Our heresiologists would have been unlikely to suspect the motives of a successor to, to Athanasius. Epiphanes writings against he may appear to date from the same decade as the letter to John. This concern makes itself apparent already in the Panarion where he attacks Christian, he, he attacks Christian image making. The these three writings against Christian image can be partially reconstructed from conciliar acta and other sources. They are, these are called treaties against those who, by idolatrous custom, and accustomed to make images representative of Christ, the Mother of God, and the Matter, and the Martyr and Father of Angel and Prophets, a letter to Theodosius, and a, and a testament, and a testament to the citizens of Salamis. Another of Epiphanius' works, De Gemis, also comes from the last decade, from the last decade of the fourth century. Preserved only in Latin epitome, it discusses the symbol, symbolism of the stone, of the stones in high priest plate. It was written for Theodore of Tarsus and witnesses, but to the close attention with which Epiphanius read scripture, and to the fact that during this period of his life he was engaged in pursuits than an obsessive opposition to origin. In fact, we do not have all his, his writings. Jerome's noti Jerome notice at Fix a field ill for 114 implies that there were large number to their contents. We have no clue but questions criticism of the smallness of his ovary seems unjusti unjustified. The Panarion Epiphanius' major effort is very long and was divided by its author first into three books and then into seven into seven sections. Hall's edition with notes and apparatus occupied about 1,400 1, page, pages. It was begun in 374 or 375, Panarion from 2 to 3, and produced in great haste in, in less than 3 years. Book 1, translated here, 
It stands two six forty six and compresses somewhat more a third than a third of the whole. Prepanarion is a Harris eulogy. That is, it is a work which describes various systems and views which the author regards as regards as sub subversive of two religion and presents his arguments against against them. The genre is found in the Christian, the Muslim and some Oriental traditions and is alive today. In Epiphanius time it was well established. His book one is deeply indebted to Hippolytus and Irenaeus, both of whom had justice Justin Martin for a predecessor. Epiphanius in his turn served a search of, of, for Theodore and other and others. Unusually for the ancient author, Epiphanius started his own work. At the very outset, he, he explains this title and its meaning and lays out the plan and purpose this, of his book. From 1. I'm writing you the pre a preface to give, y to, gi to give the gist of my treatise against sex. Since I shall, I shall be tell you the names of the sex and exposing the unlawful deeds like, poison and, like poisons and toxic substances, matching the antidotes with them at the, ver at the same time, curse for those who are already beaten and preventatives for those who will have this misfortune. I am, dra I am drafting this preface here for the scholarly to explain the panarion or chest of remedies for the victims of white beast fights. It is a work in three volumes and contains 86 which answer symbolically to white animals or snakes. Epiphanius' intent then is to comfort and to protect his means of doing so is to identify wrong doctrines so that his fellow Christians can keep away from them and to convince of the truth those who have stumbled into these doctrines. He has been caught a heresy hunter, but the term scarcely expressed what he meant to do. It has also been pointed out that he was following conventions, which by his time had been fixed. While this is so, his vehemence make, makes it plain that he was not merely falling in with some established pattern, he meant every word of what he wrote. In his second poem, he explains what he means by antidotes. Rome 2, 2 and 3. And to correspond with this, with this serpent, with this serpents and beasts, I shall give as many arguments like antidotes, like antidotes as I can in short compass, one of one or two at most to contract the poison the poisons and the poison and after the Lord to save any more who care to be when he has willingly or inadvertently fallen into this snake like teachings of the sect. These questions will show that everyone use is writing not simply of heretical ideas as such but of heretical ideas in the context of the sex which hold and teach them. As he most often uses uses it in the term I resist, refers to the party of action, the sex, the sex which holds a particular error. Typical of this of this usage is Epiphanius' description of the followers of Simon Magus. Simon Magus makes the first Irishes to begin in the time since Christ. It, may, it is made up of persons who do not right or rightly or lawfully believe in Christ's name, but who do their dreadful deeds is keeping with the false corruption that is in them. Epiphanius does occasionally use Irishes to mean heresy as at, as at 21. Point five, point six. When we read, for for who can fail to realize that this sort of irises is a myth, nonetheless, sect 
which prefer to friction because of its ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical condition is what he used means by the word. Further, he terms the individual chapters of the Panarion sect, which, when this is his meaning, we, cap we capitalize. The Panarion opened with two prompts, the first consisting of Epiphanius on table of contents, the second of a, a, the second of a formal introduction, which explains the work more fully. The whole concludes with a brief and accurate description of the Catholic faith and apostolic faith, usually called the Fide. Epiphanius sex. Epiphanius sex, his sex, is an historic, historical framework. They begin not after, uh, not after Christ, as we might expect, but with Adam, it has turned through the others on, on lifetime. His total of 80 sects comes from the Song of Songs, Chapter 6, verse 8 until, until 9. There are, there are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins without number. My dove under my dove, my underfeet is what is but one. The Dictis concubines are groups in which bear Christ's name. The uh, uh, Dictis concubines are groups which bear Christ's name. But like his feet as a concubine, he chooses a master, a master name, but is not, but is not his wife. The one dove is the Catholic Church. The virgins with, without number, a various philosophies which are in no way related to Christ or to anything important. Panarion 35.3.5 and DVD 6.9. The Ectiquids. Are the generations for Adam until Christ, while the number round, while the round, while the number rounded off, the fide point four, the, the fide four, one point and one hundred five point five point four. This last exegesis is labored, but uh, is labored, but given if a new historical if a new historical approach, not in, inappropriate. Epiphanius felt his procedure to be justified because of Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. There is neither Helen or Jew, barbarian, Scythian, but Christ is all and in all. Barbarian, bar barbarism, Scythism, Hellenism, Judaism, to which Epiphanius adds Samaritanism, are the first sex and the mothers of the rest. To this epi to this five, to this five, Epiphanius adds for badly misreported Greek philosophies, for Samaritan groups, and seven types of Judaism, making a total twenty baby for Christ. Next follows his attractive account of Christ's sojourn here and true advent in the flesh of in the person, in the flesh in person, a short description of of Christ's ministry and of planting of the church, which we call the Incarnazione. Then, in what the author believes to be the order of the succession, follow the sixty sects which have arisen after Christ. The Panagion may fairly be called an historical encyclopedia of sectarianism. Pre preceding its section, of the work is an anasepaleosis or summary. These are not authentic. Epiphanius makes no mention of them in the body of his work, though his, he, does spoke, he does speak of the poems and of his conclude, concluding say. The anasepaleosis are so worded as to suggest that they are meant to be read as a whole tree, for example, and this will, sum will summarize the three section sections of Volume 1, which includes 46 sects. Although the summary begins only with sect 30 34, the Anna sometimes disagree in small details or even in order with the material of the Panarion, 
there are an epitome of the work which originally circulated independently but at but at an early date was edified edited into it augustine used them presumably in latin translation as the basis of his contrarumness heresies whether he ever saw the panagad itself is highly doubtful in discussing a sect epiphanius consciously and unconsciously falls into a sort of form part form falls into a sort of four part form first come a brief first comes a brief introduction giving the sex a name to Epiphanius a very important matter relating it to the sex which our other beliefs preceded it and furnishing biographical details concerning its wonder then follows a concise description of the sex beliefs and practices the third part the reputation is normally the longest the usual clause is a few lines which compare the work and the, the which compare the group under discussion to to some noxious animal but was often a poisonous snake however this worm is not always strictly adhered to description and refutation are often mixed together in the latter portions of part of the Panarion, where Epiphanius is discussing his contemporaries and persons of the recent part, when what he says about the succession of various groups or the influence of one leader upon another comes for his own knowledge in Book 1, where the leaders of whom he speaks are well in the past, he is dependent is dependent upon his success from his sort of information. He knows, for example, that Simon Magus is the father of all the sex since Christ coming because Irenaeus so. From Irenaeus, again, he learned that a number of sex which call themselves Gnostics, Gnostics, Gnostics arose all at once from Valentinus, that Lucian, May was that look that Glucian was Marxian disciples uh, disi Marxian's disciple and Apelles Lucians. Le he learns from Hippolytus when his sources give him no specific guidance of this kind, he is more cautious. Twenty nine point one point one. After this Corinthians comes Nazorians. Who, origi who originated at the same time or even before or in conjunction or in conjunction with them or after them in any case they were their contemporaries i cannot say more precisely who succeeded whom in other words everyone is, has little of no independent information about the genesis of the various sects nor are the names that he and his predecessors apply to sex to be really re relied on. These are really book, really labels who meant to identify and classify some group of whom Christians must be, be must beware. Epiphanius himself Epiphanius himself says that the terms are logi forty one fifty one point three point one until two and anti and anti decomarians from one four point one and his own coinage. Rarely are such name, names of the of the ones in the group in question gave themselves dogenostics. Dogenostic may be an exception. Equally rarely do they represent organized bodies. Though again they, they were Masonite and Valentinian churches. The Panarion contains much material of historical value, but Epiphanius names from the sex and his reports of their successions, of, of their successions are not the best areas in which to look for it. For the content of his refutation of sex, Epiphanius takes inspiration where he finds it. He often draws on the other authors. 
this does his arguments against Noetians no, Noetians sec 557 are adapted from the from a document which is called Swai Predicton Hippolytes by Swax and Conca Noetum by Horse by Hall, but which is thought by Pokir and Ardox to be a to be a fragment of Hippolytus lost in syntagma uh, apart from his apart from this we cannot be certain how much refutatory material be found used found in he in Hippolytus but the number of his logical arguments against genoticism are inspired by Irenaeus heresies especially his book second our footnotes occasion, occasionally refer to the reader to such passages. However, Evanius does not use the work of earlier heresiologists in a, in a wooden or mechanical manner. He often quotes from, the, from them at the length, but as often adapts adapt or expands on their points in his own fashion. They serve, they serve as stimuli to his thinking. We can be the most certain that we are hearing Epiphanius on voice when he does his time after a time, he quotes scripture to prove a point. He was proficient in biblical exegesis as he as his age understand the disciple the discipline and his scriptural reputations can be pity and forceful. A good example from his manner is his sense of to the Nazarene's refusal to, to eat meat. Not only the events recorded in scripture famous to this day, but even the sites of the wonders are, are preserved. First, there is the spot where Abraham offered the ram to God called Mount Zion to this day. Moreover, the site of the Oak of Mamre, where the calf was, was served to the angels. But if Abraham served his mate this to angels, he would not he she would not fail to say some of itself. Moreover, the tradition of the lamb which which was slaughtered in Egypt is still foremost among the Egyptians. And our order goes on to on to discuss an Egyptian an Egyptian fox custom of which we uh, we learn only from him. Similar laboratory of his controversial ability are his anti-max unit argument at 42.11.15f based on except of formations kind of scripture. If he found used to go for BVD and achieve it more often than Panarion's length world such as sometimes his subject runs away with him as in sect 30, when he first relates the long story Josephus of, of Tiberias told him, and later discourses against Abionit do, doctrines at considerable length. More often, more, more often when a sect is lengthy, is, is lengthy, it is because Epiphanius has quoted such material. Thus, sect 31 reproduces in full an other words on non valentinian document and then an extensive passage from Irenaeus quotes the full the, the whole of the Espister Ptolemy to Flora or only text of this work, such quotations from an important part of the Panagion of the Panagion's usefulness. The source of Panagion as plainly as he lays out his purpose and format, Epiphanius sets, sets forth his sources of information at Prom 2, 2.4. So, some of the things about sex and, and schisms which I shall be telling the reader, I owe to my fondness for study certain. I see certain things I learned from her, from her say, though I came into contact with some art, with some to my ears and eyes. I'm, I am confident that I can give an account from an, from a correct report of the origins and teachings of some sex, and 
and part of what goes on among of the others on the on these letters are in no one from the works of ancient authors another by listening to the learned man who confirmed my notice my notice my notion precisely the panel yonder is based on information gain gain both from others and at first hand and only literary research of everyone you search for informa for informants we find on an equal at best epistle two hundred fifty eight in which in, in which Basil on search he is in query about Magusians, a group of Epiphanius decided to classify as a philosophy, the video 13.1. When he speaks of personal experience, he is thinking chiefly on the gnostics of sect 26, but he knew a good deal at first hand about Archontics of sect 40 and something about the Satians about sect of sect 39. Besides, he often had lively interchange with persons of other persuasions and the, Pan and the Panarion contains reminiscences of this. However, the majority of his information is documentary of the, of the many sources of the long Panarion we list only those which underlie book 1. If Ivanius often assists the reader by naming them, he speaks of Clement of Alexandria, Arrhenius, Hippolytus, and many more, of Eusebius, the Book of Jubilees, the Travels of Peter, the Ascents of James, a Clementine treatise addressed to elders and virgins, the Gospel according to Hebrews, the Book of El Kasai, an apostolic and the apostolic constitutions. At 27.6.4, Epiphanius calls Clement of Rome. Without remembering that his source is, is the first epistle, works which he uses without giving the names of Eusebius Chronicle and Preparatio Evangelica and Hippolytus Chronicle, in addition to the long quotations from Gnostic, from Gnostic works which we have mentioned. He gives further ones from some others. The, this will be discussed below, discussed below. Of all of these sources, the two most important are the lost syntagma of Hippolytus and the contra omnes heresies of Irenaeus. The former supplies much of the framework of Book 1 of the text. 48, 50, 54 until 55, and 57 of Book 7. We know of it. We know of it from the catalog of the library of Potius, 9th century patriarch of Constantinople, where it is called Bibla Bibla Ridion. There was read. Bible Ridion of Hippolytus. Hippolytus was a disciple of Irenaeus. It was the syntagma against Iresis, which begins with the with the Diocetians and continues with until Noetus and the Noetians. He says that Irenaeus refuted them in his preaching with arguments which he Hippolytus says that he has summarized in the book he has comp composed. A series of sects of heresies which seems to correspond with this is, with, with this is found in the Panarion and in two other documents, the, Diver, the Diversarum Heresion Liber of Epiphanius Younger's contemporary Philaster of Prescia and the spurious 13th chapter of Tertullian's Prescriptio Her 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 Hereticorum, commonly referred to as Pseudo Tertullian. This letter, the earliest of the, the earliest of the three, is thought to be a third century epitome of the syntagma. It mentions 29 sects of heresies, although from the Noetus with whom of with whom the syntagma was said to end it 
has substituted the, the third century monarchy in Pisces, with some variations and sometimes with other groups interspersed between Pseudo Tertullians, 29, Epiphanius, and Philaster, contain substantially, su substantially the same list in the substantially the same order. Further, the three documents between them share many items of information. The syntagma then appears to be the common source of all three, and from them, some of its content may be reconstructed. The Panarion dependence upon the syntagma was proposed by, by, was proposed by Lipsius in, in 1865 and elaborated by Hilgenfeld in 1884 and in our time has, has been tested by Bokir. Objections can be offered to the idea but, uh, but it accounts for the data in so many cases that it must be taken as preferred. As important as Hippolytus to Epiphanius is Arrhenius, whom he, he calls successor of, of, of the Apostles, Elder Beloved of God, Holy. Epiphanius has read, it, has read at least three of his books, probably his entire works, probably his entire work, and often quotes him never Hippolytus at length. He introduces Iranian material in sect after sect, and when discussing the Valentinians and their relatives de depends upon him entirely. This is the case with the sects 22, 23, 27, 31, and 34 until 30, 36. None of these sources are Latin, and nothing in the Panarion, which is taken from Book 5 until 8 of Hippolytus or, Jefu, or Josephus Refutatio, whether this is because Epiphanius did not know the work or simply because he was uninterested in philosophy, is a judgment call. When the Panarion seems to include Hippolyte, Hippolytian material, this is unsuitable for the syntagma of Ere from the syntagma of Irenaeus sources, which are utilized by Epiphanius and apparently in some books of the Refutatio, ideas or doctrines similar to those mentioned by Epiphanius, of course, appear now and then in the Refutatio, we refer to them in our footnotes. Finally, an extremely important source of Book 1 and of all the books of the Panarion is Holy Scripture, where its, the, where its, testi where its testimony is available, the Epiphanius prefers it to all others. The Panarion and Gnostic Literature Sex 20, 26 is rich in references to Gnostic Literature. We find a short passage from a Gospel of Eve at 26 Point three point one, one from a question of Mary at twenty six point eight point one, and one from the Gospel of Philip, and one from a Gospel of Philip, not identical with Nakhamadis, at twenty six, thirteen two, at twenty at twenty six point two point five, Epiphanius names a Gospel of perfect of perfection, but cites nothing from it. At 26.8.1, he refers to Apocalypse of, uh, of Adam, which may or may not include the one we know from Hanak Hamadi, and to books about Yaldaba, Yaldabot, and books in the, name of Seth, of, in the name of Seth. This last is of interest since both in HG, in HG 7.2 and and 7.5 had such name in, in the titles Panarion 39.5.1 also speaks of books in the name of Seth. In this, in this case, seven of them and 30 and 40.7.4 of books in the name of Seth and his seven sons. The, there are likewise several mentions of books 
call allogenes or strangers. These are found at 39.5.1 and 40.2.1 and 40.7.5. Again, we have found works which bear this title. In AC 9.3 is called allogenes, the fourth tractat in the Codex of Tacos, the Book of Allogenes. The book Tacos also has recently shown us that there was indeed of a gospel of Judas. When Epiphanius read of in when, which Epiphanius read of in Irenaeus and mentioned at 38.1.5. The discovery at Anak Hamadi and now and now from the Codex of Tacos have enlarged of under as a last of our understanding of genoticism and its relationship with the great church. We can now see the data from the viewpoints both of persons who loved genoticism and persons who hated it. Who hated it. Epiphanius knows the teachings of the genostics only superficially. He does appreciate their seriousness or their delicacy allegory, allegory Exegetical in ingenuity and imaginative beauty of some of their writings. He says repeatedly that genostics means genostic mean merely to look to glorify themselves and cause trouble and that they they are all immoral or if chaste hypocritically so. In reporting these doctrines, he sometimes commits graves. He confessed the roles of the exalted Iron Bar below and the fallen Sophia identifies the demiurge with an identity with an entity he caused deficiency and believes incorrectly that the Gnostic Christ is no more than a red of phantasm. Nor is he nor is he correct in asserting that the Gnostic resurrection is merely a resurrection of all the soul. Although some Nakhamadi passages might give this impression, nonetheless, he and his fellow Heri and his fellow heresiologists provide a fairly good index of the characteristics, the characteristic idea, ideas, exegesis, and mythologumena, the most important personae, and the most typical expressions of Gnostic literature. Nakhamadi. And our other journalistic discoveries on the other, on the on the one hand, and the heresiologists on the other, are witnesses confirmatory of each other, and should both be read, and should both be read by the student of the period. It is difficult to read either the Panagion or Nakhamadi tractats without being reminded of some passage in in the in the other. We have documented a number of parallels in our footnotes, others will find more. Epiphanius as writer The poorness of Panarian style must not lead must not lead us to suppose that Epiphanius was an was an uneducated lord. This important Christian leader who was on friendly terms with Athanasius conferred with Damasus, corresponded with Basil, and it was in and was in contact with dignitaries with, with dignitaries of the first rank, had been exposed to God written and spoken Greek. This excerpts from others' writings when he includes in the Panarion are enough to show us this. Though he come though he came nowhere near matching the good Christian rhetoricians of his century. Epiphanius, where took pains, could write an acceptable ecclesiastical style. His letter to Arabia, found in sector 78, compares in quality with Athanasius' letter to Epictetus of Corinth of 77. It, founds, it follows the outline proper from an epideictic oration and is caught in simple but effective sentences. Much of the Ancoratus in form an epistolary in form an epistolary reply to letters from three 
will educate correspondence is in smooth Greek. It's opening. Though the git is probably enough for any rhetorician. Prom 2 of the Panarion, of the Panarion likewise exhibits the elements which were expected in the preface. The deprecation of the, of the other's competence. The explanation of the work subject and of its intent. That Epiphanius did not complete his rhetorical training does not mean that he learned nothing from it. For the Panarion's awkwardness, there are, others, there are other reasons that Epiphanius lack of classical education. One is his attitude toward Greek, Greek culture. He distrusted Greek education and the art of, re of rhetoric with it. I don't care for the art of rhetoric, but for my reader's benefit, he says at 31.35.1. Moreover, he is concerned that his work be accessible to simply monks, the little ones in the cloisters, of whom Acacius and Paul speak. At Prom 2, 2.5, he states that he intends to write not with eloquence of language of any Polish races, but with plain speech in a plain dialect but with accuracy of the facts of my speech conveys. This might explain the avid reading of his work by the simple, by the simple proverbs, as Jerome remarks. The simple understand that the, the simple could understand what he wrote. Most importantly, the huge panarion began and finished within three years is for the most part oral Greek, it was simply detected. We may suppose in haste and take it down just as Epiphanius delivered it. His, his stenographer and scribe, the deacons Anatolius and Hippatius, signed the names at the end at the end of the video. Presumably Epiphanius had had notes before him or copies of some of his sources but much of his composition is plainly at lip just at 30.13.2 he suddenly interrupts his discussion of Matthew's gospel in Hebrew to back to back out and they call this and they call this thing Hebrew his assistance must have been if if a new sentences so much coordination than subordination and will of them simply run on and simply run on until they finish a story a short example which we break into more than one sentence is found at 30.18.3 where Epiphanius tries in one breath to tell the reader all he knows of the of Ebionid customs when in a hurry he may cover his ground with a long string with a, with a long string of genitive absolute phrases. Not often, but in a few instances a sentence will not quite construe throughout this is true. What assumes to the speaker has to the speaker's hast. An epiphanian sentence can be tangled as his infective against Valentinians and Gnostics at 31.1.1 until 2, sometimes as at 29.3.7 until 9. One can be no more than several elements side by side, scarcely deserving the name of the of sentence. All these evidences or all these evidences or a composition an oral length of time of revision, the busy, the busy bishop will have little time for that. This oral delivery can be effective. This, there are passages of lively argument, like the discussions of the demiurge and matter at 36.4.5f, or of the origin of evil at 24.6.1 until 3. Epiphanius' imaginary 
the dialogues with heretic with heretics long dead and are vivid and amusing. Sometimes we find a widely range extra extemporaneous segment as when Epiphanius Pilaris of the Opo of it as as when Epiphanius Pilaris of the the, the Ovids in sect 37, sometimes he almost achieved the level of the Yatrib. But this doctrine is refuted by the truth itself. If Simon is the supreme power of God and the third he has with him in the, is the Holy Spirit, as he says himself, then he should give the name of the power or else say, why a title has been found for the woman, but not at all for himself. And how does it happen that Simon went to pray of all flesh one day at Rome when, it, when his turn came, when the wedge fell down and died in the middle of the city of Rome? And why did Peter declare that Simon has no part or share in the heritage of true relig religion? And how can the world be? And how can the world be not belong to the to a good God, when all the good have been chosen for it, have been chosen for it? And how can the power which spoke in the law and the prophets be left hand, when it had when it has heralded Christ coming from the good God, in advance and forbids or wrongdoing? And how can there are not be one Godhead and the same Spirit of the New Testament and the Old God and, uh, and of the Old, since the Lord said, I am not come to destroy the law but to fulfill, and to show that the law was delivered by himself and proclaimed to Moses, while the grace of the gospel has been preached by himself, and his advent in the flesh, he told the Jews, has ye believe, has, Had ye believed Moses, yet would have believed in you also, for he he wrought of me. The strength of Epiphanius is, is his ability to tell a story when he says at 40.4 until 7 of the Gnostic, Peter is a short example, the colorful narrative of Josephus. At thirty point four until twelve, a long one. The brief anecdotes he relates here and there in the course of his arguments are, are always interesting. Opposed to this, however, are long stretches of dull prose, recurring theological formulas, again always in the same words, repetition sentences resulting from a combination of sources, and as mentioned some passages which are nothing but the tangle. The more accurate description which can be given of the Panarion style is uneven. Many idioms in the Panarion are distinctive and again such suggestive of oral Greek. There are periphrastic constructions with some verbs as skin, lambanin, anadigeste, puin. We find wordy pronoun we find worthy non-locutions when another writer might have preferred a simple preposition and t peri peritomi scesi for in relation in circumcision even if the text is ordered grad e castin hypothesin lexeos for concerning ex expression mahomeni Tateron is tateron pros, meaning simply inconsistent with faith, inconsistent with. Topan meros means all of. Words are not always used in the obvious senses which one would expect. Mythologima, mythology. Mythologia and mythos are synonyms, for example, and the two formers and the two former are never found in the Ancoratus, a former a more formal treatise than the Panarion. Pigopia means the building of the tower. 
but simply the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel, so that Scythians, Tisusi, Tinpigopian sketches, which often carries its common meaning of relation, may also mean kind, type, or even occurrence. Hypothesis employed in several senses by Epiphanius can also mean type, kind. Hyponia sometimes means speculation. Mortirie are bad arguments. A patristic dictionary will often document an unusual set of meaning of some word with an example from Epiphanius and that from the Panerion, from the Panerion rather than from the Ancoratus. While we do not know the reason for Epiphanius' distinctive vocabulary, a plausible explanation is that it is colloquial, not a demotic, but an everyday Greek which some educated persons employed in discussing serious subjects. A study of the Panarion's vocabulary by a Greek philologist might, might prove fruitful. A characterization of the Panarion style, Hors Erhobenes Koine and De Angesich or Geswas of others seem equally wide of the mark. Colloquial Koine will answer, the, will answer best. Epiphanius, the controversialist. All of the church fathers, Epiphanius is the most generally disliked. It would be easy to assemble from the writings of pathologists and historians of religion a bill of particulars against him. He is heresy hunter, a name called a name color and nasty. His, his judgments as, are uncritical. His theology is shallow and his manner of holding of holding it intransigent. Above all, he vehemently opposed the teachings of the good of the good commentator Origen, the first Christian systematic theologian and as a thinker far superior to Epiphanius. As to the last charge, Origen had many opponents. Epiphanius only commented the widest audience. Further, he had made some of Origen's achievements. His attack on him was not that of an obscurantist or an intellectual, but that of a doctrinal purist on a teacher whom many, whom many considered heretical. As to the epithet nasty, name calling was characteristic of controversial writings in the 4th century, though it must be admitted that Epiphanius carried, carried it to extremes. He, in fact, apologized for this in his first poem. The terms of abuse he uses, he says, are his way of distancing himself from doctrines he abhors. Gnostics, whom he particularly abhorred, tend to be the objects of his least pleasant epithet. With, other, with others, he can be a little more polite. To the charge of uncritical judgment, an advocate of Epiphanius must allow him to plead, to plead guilty. Though he was a serious researcher, researcher, he believed the testimony he wanted to believe. When he had the direct correct with his opponents, it was with the intent of conflicting, of convincing rather than of listening to them. He who is without dissent must cast the first stone. As a theologian, Epiphanius is Epiphanius in no sense much, say, the Cappadocian fathers or even Athanasius. He can, however, be underrated, though in the Panarion he again and again repeats the same doctrinal formulas. His discussion of the Holy Spirit's divinity shows careful thought. Epiphanius was not at home in philosophy and his quasi-philosophical arguments are generally inspired by others. He is, however, very proficient in scripture, 
and in the Ancoratus and elsewhere uses his proficiency to good effect. Intransigence is characteristic of religious thought in more ages, and was certainly so in that of everyone used. His was the time of the, of the bitter Aryan controversy, and his work was a product of it. In any case, all sides in the 4th century held in common the premise that God's absolute truth was available, conveyed by an infallible scripture, and that to deny it was sinful and imperiled one's salvation. A century before Epiphanius, Origen had written, I am of the opinion that it is indeed evil for one to err in his manner of life, but far, but far worse to go astray in doctrines and not to and not think in accordance with the most true rule of the scriptures. Since we are to be punished for indulging in moral sins, much more when we sin because of false doctrines, for if a life of good morals suffices men for salvation, why is it that many philosophers among the Gentiles who like continently, and many among the heretics can by no means be saved, as if the falseness of their doctrine obscured and solid their, their manner of life? Gnostic writers, the Gnostic writings themselves, often exhibit the instigates in exhibit the intransigence of their day, the gospel of Judas furnishes us with an example. Though Epiphanius devoted great effort to his battle against heresy, with this by no means his sole interest, we have already noted that that we have already noted that his de mensuris and the game is the and the game is that from the Precisely the period in which he was not occupy, occupied with the originist controversy. Passages in the Ancoratus shows that his, he was a missionary, con, his, continued, con, his continued connection with his monastery at Eleftheropolis, that he was a pastor, that his message was positive, not negative, can be seen in the opening chapters of the Ancoratus, where he promises his correspondence neither to refuse nor to postpone his answer concerning the teachings of the Divine Sacred Scripture with regard to the salvation which is among us, the firm foundation of our faith concerning Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all the rest of the salvation in Christ, I mean concerning the resurrection of the dead and the advent in the flesh of the Holy only begotten concerning both the old and the new covenants and in general the other supports of complete salvation to these imperatives Epiphanius devoted his life his controversial writings are intended to teach them and to defend them from attacks which he considered perverse and dangerous. As we have tried to show, the student of Nag Hammadi and other Gnostic literature needs Epiphanius and his fellow heresiologists in order to see the full picture of what was at stake. Beyond this, a church historian or historian of religion has several reasons for consulting this writer. As is well known, he, he preserves the documents which are not available as well and is an important witness to the Greek text of Irenaeus and the events of the 4th century in which he was a participant. For another reason, the historian needs to know something of him. His is the 4th century voice of what in our day we would call fundamentalism. Nothing had said to them, nothing had said of him, he be funny Sarah Reste person and school of Epiphanius kind have always had great influence, not only throughout Christian history, but throughout that but throughout that of 
all the good religions to understand the past and therefore the present it is unnecessary to know to know them as it is to know the good creative thinkers footnotes these volumes footnotes reversively either to patristic or to gnostic literature the former are intended to serve both epiphanius sources and the places where the same information may be found in his contemporaries or near contemporaries the latter the manner in which he and Gnostic sources agree or, or disagree with each other. The patristic notes are based on whole Sakaparat, though they usually refer to editions more recent than more recent than those used by Hall. We use Hall selectively, limiting our notes to the matters which seem most directly relevant. For further information, Hall must be consulted or contribution, the Gnostic notes are references to the passages in Nag Hammadi, the Berlin Gnostic Codex, the Codex Tacos, and the SQ and Gus Codices. They aim at the completeness, but omissions will of course be found. Occasionally, we set an interesting parallel for Manichian and Mandian literature, but the comparison of this with the Christian heresiologists must be made by specialists in this field. In these fields, unfortunately, lack of space prevents our including many quotations in our notes. We must refer to the readers to the patristic or gnostic texts themselves. We provide indices of references. We hope that this book will prove to be a, to be a useful aid in historical study and scholarship. Frank Williams, Las Cruces in M&M, &M, USA, March 24, 2007.